Thank you for joining us uh, again. Uh, with, uh, this is the last segment with uh, former Senator um, Eric Griegos, and we're grateful to have you back. I'm, gra I'm really glad you came in. Um, uh, you know, we were talking about the economy. There's a lot of issues there. Economy is recovering, so we're coming out of the, uh, you know, uh, out of that recessionary it period. There was so, a pretty yeah. deep recession there. Uh, I think you'll agree with me on that. Um, it, it looked pretty bad for us for a while there. Then we slowly start to get some hope there and stuff. Um, hopefully, things will recover. I think uh, you're, uh, you've been in, you know, in public service for many years. Um, anything that you would like to uh, uh, initiate as far as uh, your uh, past runs that are uh, that you feel that the current uh, runs for mayor that you see in common there right now anything that you see I know that individuals are different but then uh, you have a Republican there first time you didn't we never saw that before in the 30 years I think as far as I can remember uh, 30 years was the last time when we had a Republican I think it's Ken there. Schultz all right I think Ken Schultz is uh, Stover mm. going all the way back to 1980 Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, I, that's when I was in uh, Highland at that time. Oh, my gosh. I was in Highland High School. Ago. <laughs> that was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, well, it's not partisan race. Yeah. So, I mean, I think yeah. hopefully, you know, there should be less partisanship in local government. Yeah. I mean, it's about providing yeah. good public services, keeping the city safe, keeping it clean and dynamic and creating an economy. And I would like to think that regardless of your party, that everybody agrees we want to create a dynamic city. It's unfortunate when too many of these other sort of political issues get involved. And, I hope that you know whatever happens, whoever wins, uh, city council, the mayor, that we can agree that we've got a, you know, we've got a, we've potentially not out of the woods yet, and we've mm -hmm. got to really invest in our city and and work together to make our city strong. So I hope that whoever comes out uh, is committed. It'll be an, I think it'll be a pretty decent race to watch. I mean, we're we got a few more months, I and mean, things will get heated. They'll get pretty ugly, and then eventually we'll sit, take some break there, and we'll get into the next cycle there with the gubernatorial again in January, gubernatorial and stuff like that. Um, I wanted to bring up uh, something that happened in January, and uh, I, I'm, not, I'm sure that, you know you might want to talk about it a little bit. I know your case uh, regarding your brother there and your mm -hmm. nephew. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know you made national news there. You were on the I think Dr. Drew show and stuff. And I know sometimes the media has its way of looking, making it look a certain way. And uh, uh, talk a little bit about it and what you, I, I know you wanted to close that chapter out there, and, and it's not a very nice thing and we're really sorry for your loss there. Uh, talk a little bit about um, how you felt uh, uh, that the media was regarding that case with your nephew and all that. Yeah, well you know I, I think uh, we would have preferred you know in this it, an enormous tragedy no family ever dreams they'd have to go through it and we certainly didn't ever think about it but um, I, and v we very much wanted to sp spend our time grieving and but we, we did we were very concerned that the media not all of the media but but much of the media and you know certain public officials were sort of using it as an opportunity to really sort of pile on uh, this uh, my nephew who is this obviously this very very uh, troubled um, you know um, we think kid with some pretty serious mental health issues and um, so we felt like we had to intervene. I had no interest in being in front of the media when I was trying to take care of my family, but I, we really felt like it was we needed to defend, the, you know, really our constitutional system and, and this young man who clearly made a terrible, terrible exactly. decision. So, so that's why we did it. Um, and um, the we, national media made it look uh, very different from the local oh, yeah. media. Yeah, they tried um, to they tried yeah. to be fair. I mean, there were some national media outlets that I don't think did the best job. Uh, the the problem with this with the strategy in our family, like. Uh, like Connecticut and like it's happening all sadly all across our country and uh, is that is we uh, we have to start thinking more seriously about uh, about mental health issues especially ad adolescent mental health issues and and you know we've learned an enormous amount about how complex that is and how complex these kind of tragedies are um, and that we as a nation have to come together and decide that uh, that we're gonna really commit to, to getting more again it's about where we put our resources more resources into diagnosing this and treating it and not just for adolescents but the, for the adults in the situations because these don't happen in a vacuum so um, the community has been incredibly kind to us and um, it's been tough for us to, to, to continue and, and try to, to advocate for my for my nephew but I but I hope that he uh, I hope that uh, he will be treated fairly and I hope that he will be uh, judged uh, for what he is, and he's just uh, you know a, a young guy who made a really terrible decision and uh, yeah. who has some mental health issues. So, but we're all trying to move on and um, hope for the best. Um, and uh, well, um, uh, you know, I know it's a difficult thing to talk about, but I, uh, I thought I'd um, talk about because that was the last time we saw you on yeah. there. So, let's change gears. Let's get into you're going to run for 
uh, you want to run for governor? Are you going to run for governor? Well, I would like to I announce on some the show right there, there. now that I am running for governor. <laughs> well, I'd like you, I really like you to announce for something, but you know. So I just you heard it here first, an exclusive. <laughs> I'm running for governor. Okay. That's the that's the big announcement. The 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 bad news is I'm running for governor of. Um, Tingley Park, which has its own <laughs> governing okay. system. So, no, I'm not running. I, you know, I've been. Well, honored. there was some rumors there. You, I mean, well, you know, I, 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 uh, I had, um, you know, the, the congressional race was very difficult. Um, you know, it takes a lot of work, and and um, public office is, you know, and campaigning is tough. And um, I have a family, and uh, I honor all of those who choose to stick their neck out and and really try to step up and serve the public. Um, for me, and my family, it's, it's a time to really, again, you know, stay close to to the family and and. Uh, and, and try to take some time. And there's some great folks out there who, who I think want to do the right thing, and I hope that um, they will be given an opportunity to lead. We've got some great new young uh, leaders who are really st coming into their own, and some great candidates for statewide office. And, and uh, so I hope that people will um, do it for the right reason and do it when the time is right for them. And um, I just, for me, the, the next. Uh, foreseeable future will be for me to, you know, kind of taking care of my... So you're just kind of taking some time yeah, off. Yeah, I'm taking right some now, time off. I never involved. say never. Well, you know, never yeah. say never, but right now it's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, I, I don't foresee myself doing it anytime soon, so... Um, the, the current governor, I, she, when she came in too, it was a big deal. It was the first female governor from New Mexico. I, um, and uh, it was a it was a new thing for the state of New Mexico to have a female governor and stuff. And she made national news there. She's been involved in national. Yeah, Gary King is going um, as far as uh, going up against her. I think Linda Lopez is also involved in there. Uh, she's also. Uh, I think she, I'm not sure if she's in an exploratory uh, stage right now, or she. I know she announced she's running for for governor. So there's. I think so far we have three in the primary. There. Yeah. Um, but she'll be a tough, pretty tough candidate to beat. I think she still has pretty high approval. Yeah, uh, 60, uh, she's in her 60s approval right now. She's raising a lot of money, so that would be a pretty tough uh, uh, race to watch. I think. Yeah, I think it will be. I mean, you know, it's again, it's always tough to go against incumbent. You know, m many of our governors have have. Had they can raise the money very easily. Well, they are in I a position they, to raise yeah. money, uh, barring something really a big scandal or anything. It's really tough. You know, it was historic to have a, a female uh, Latina governor, exactly. the first in the country. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I have some pretty significant policy differences with her, and um, but um, I think it's going to be uh, in politics. You know, as we've talked about, a few months is an eternity, so anything could happen between now and the election. Obviously, it's, we're just getting started. You know, you have people announcing for all the statewide offices and for. So um, it'll be interesting to see uh, how the race unfolds. Uh, you know, I uh, I think obviously she has a huge advantage as a sitting governor, female. Oh, and incumbents always have an advantage. Always, yeah, always. Yeah. And again, yeah. barring yeah. barring some terrible uh, something terrible from happening, hopefully uh, the state will be in, in in good shape. But you know, uh, we do have uh, you know three branches of government, and uh, I think right now uh, the legislature is where a lot of the checks and balances need to happen, and I hope that. Um, that they will assume their role of really making sure that we're making good policy that benefits every New Mexican, I especially so. those New Mexicans who are, who are least advantaged, whether it's investing in early childhood or making sure we don't gut the safety net uh, for folks or, or providing opportunities for all, and investing in some basic infrastructure so we can get this economy going again, you know, and not saying the path to growth is to cut everybody's taxes and to cut corporate taxes and somehow that's going to save us. I mean, uh, you know, we'd all love to get a tax break, but the, the reality is we invest in, a, in, in the economy we invest in and we build is the economy we're going to leave for our children and grandchildren. And I, I, I would, if I had to choose between a tax cut for myself and building some great infrastructure, light rail, uh, wonderful schools, uh, wonderful parks, so that when, I, when my kids grow up here, they can say, what a wonderful city and what a wonderful state I live in. That's more of a legacy to me than say, well, you know, I got a 2% tax cut. Exactly. Yeah. We're going to leave it at that. I think we're out of time. I really appreciate you coming in. Thank, Thank you, you for having in. me. It's I would it. really like you to come and announce. If, you're, if you change your mind, you're going to I'm thinking about it. I'm, thinking, I'm looking at 2024 as, the, as <laughs> okay. it might be the year. We're going to hold you to it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We're out of time. We'll see you next time. That was Eric Gregor, former uh, senator. Thank you.